Hey guys, good evening. It's Dr. Lauren with Restoring Life Chiropractic and I'm super excited to come on tonight and visit with you about really how to kick the sick in your house this season. So thanks for bearing with me. We had a few technical difficulties and we still had an office full of patients. So we're just jumping on here at about 645. Hey, Maria Solis, glad you're jumping on, sweetheart. So I'm excited to visit with y'all about this because honestly, um, there are so many people coming down with illnesses right now because it is that season. But what I really wanna hash out with you tonight is why it's not that season. So everybody refers to illness as a season, um, especially during the winter. So I wanna chat with you about why that is, number one, why does there tend to be more of a season of wellness or illness? Um, and then also, why do some people get sick during that season and some people don't? Some people just get to hop, skip, and jump right over the flu um, and other challenges like that, and there's a reason why. So first of all, the reason why the flu and other illnesses are associated with the season is really because of a lot of the seasonal changes that happen. So we know that whenever it's winter time and it's colder outside, we have changes in temperature, when we've got more sugar because of all the holiday treats that I definitely had a lot of this last week, be hitting the gym a little extra coming up this week. Um, but also the additional thing is being stuck inside a lot more, so not being outside, getting that vitamin D and really boosting our immune system and being stuck inside with all the germs, right? Um, and then the other thing is the additional stress of this season. So there's additional stress around the holiday season. So with all of that though, why would that change in season actually cause somebody to get sick is, is the question. Because just being in cold air shouldn't make you sick, right? Or a change in temperature should not be enough to knock somebody out. The other thing is some people are really um, susceptible and more susceptible than others to germs and viruses in their environment, and there's a reason why. Well, the main thing that we're really examining with those key changes and challenges that I just mentioned um, is our adaptability. Our adaptability as human beings to adapt to our environment and overcome it is what is truly being challenged, which is why if we are not adapting, our immune system will not respond accordingly. So a key uh, telltale sign of an immune system and a nervous system, nervous system controls the immune system, that's not adapting to its environment, both external, so germs, viruses, weather, all that, internal stress, is the chronic illness or the repetitive illness. So some people will get sick and actually stay sick longer, and then some people will actually get sick and they will get well, but then they'll jump right back into illness with something else. So when that happens, it's our immune system not adapting. So one of the main reasons why that happens is we really have to break it down to what controls that adaptability. If we control what, if we can understand what controls our ability as humans to adapt, then we can understand how to really hack the system. So I wanna teach you just a trick that we have in chiropractic to hack the system of wellness and to hack your adaptability and increase it. So we know that the nervous system actually controls our immune response and not everybody really understands that. So um, from the moment that there's actually conception, so sperm, egg, meat, boom, big spark of energy happens, these cells that make a human start to divide, right? And become a human being. From the moment that that happens, what that energy is doing is forming a nervous system is one of the first things that it forms. So most of the time before a woman even knows that she's pregnant or maybe right about when the nausea hits for me around 16 days, the brain and nervous system has formed. And the reason that happens is because the brain and nervous system is the computer of the body. It runs the show. It runs every process, right? The lungs expanding, the heart beating, digestion, everything, but it also runs your immune system. Your immune system is not just a bunch of little cells working on their own or chemicals working on their own. It is your brain and nervous system telling your immune system how to respond. So you can think of your brain 
um, and your, your spinal cord and those nerves, that full central nervous system as like the commanding office of the military. And you can think of all the cells that respond as your immune system, as the soldiers, okay? So we can't have boots on the ground, we can't have those soldiers launching if the command center is down, if the command center is not communicating with the body. So if you or your kiddos are having some chronic immune challenges um, or challenges that are just lasting too long, then guess what? Your soldiers are, your boots are not on the ground. Your soldiers are not deployed and those immune cells are not working for you like they should. So what we do in chiropractic is we reboot that command center. We get that command center on track. We look for stress in the nervous system that's actually preventing uh, the body from responding to that threat like it should and launching those soldiers. And as we clear the stress within the spine and within the nervous system, the brain, the part of the brain that controls the immune system launches into overdrive, it can communicate with the body and it can launch those soldiers. So that's when we see that, that immune response that actually um, does its job. So we have kids that come into our office all the time that have struggled with chronic illness. We even have adults who have. And through chiropractic care, they're able to break free from that. So uh, what we do in our office is really measure that command center. So we have technology that can measure the adaptability of your nervous system and tell us, is your command center online? Is it communicating well? And if not, what can we do about it? And then throughout care, we see people completely rebound, their immune system reboots, their stress level reboots, and not only their immune system, but oftentimes if someone has an immune challenge, they'll also have some other corresponding issues as well. Some really common things we see are challenges with sleep, challenges with digestion, uh, challenges in respiratory health outside of getting sick. So maybe something like asthma that's been recurrent and um, chronic ear infection, sinus infections, all of those things, um, as well as even changes in a child's ability to focus, um, mood control, stress control, all of that. Because as the brain gets stressed and we have that interference in that command center, we excuse me, can also have interference in other processes. So sometimes those um, challenges actually come together. So really the entire concept of this whole chat tonight about kicking the sick is all about just rebooting your immune system and how to get it on track. Now, I also wanna give you some additional tips that we use at our home to help our body's adaptability. So number one, if you're someone that struggles or your kiddos struggle or you're just going into that season where you're gonna need more adaptability, let's say the winter season, then you just wanna prep for that. So things that we do in our home, we do lots of soups because I can always hide vegetables in there. And um, if your kids like, my kids don't like casseroles, but if they do, parents tell me all the time, they hide vegetables and spaghetti. They, you know, all that stuff. If you're an adult, you can handle some broccoli. So just eat it, right? So eat as many greens as you can eat as fresh as you can, decrease that processed food because processed food just tanks your immune system as well, and decrease sugar. So um, with my kids, I just like to find really good alternatives where I'm not just depriving them or myself, but we just choose healthier options. And then obviously decreasing the chemical load in your body, so shopping organic is a great option. Now that's gonna help reduce the chemical stress on your body emotional stress. So for me, I up my workouts and my self-care during this season because I know that I'm going to need that increased adaptability. A lot of people depend on me and with the weather and, and the stress of the holidays and all those changes, I increase my adjustments, I increase my healthy food intake, and I increase my movement. So just exercising or even helping your children um, do fun exercise, which we do at my house. We do like frog leaps and, and fun stuff inside the house can boost your dopamine, boost your immune system. Another thing is adding in some key supplements. So key supplements that you want to add in are those immune boosting supplements. So vitamin D is a great thing and we don't get enough of it in the winter season. If you're not supplementing vitamin D, you are most likely deficient in it or at least below optimal. You might not be deficient, but you may not have optimal amounts of vitamin D. So we always double down on the vitamin D when we're not getting a bunch of, a bunch of sunshine. Uh, sublingual vitamin D works best 
versus a pill. So we like to do the under the tongue vitamin D. I sneak it into my kid's mouth or I'll even like stick it in juice or something like that, a healthy juice and they'll drink that. And um, the other thing is vitamin C. We know that vitamin C is great for our immune system. A lot of people buy like some packaged vitamin C, but that's in like those little packs at the convenience store. So if you really need to boost your immune system, that's probably not gonna be best for you. If you read the back of those little packets, there's a lot of sketchy stuff in there. So you wanna get a raw form of vitamin C. A very simple one that I like to grab just at Sprouts is Garden of Life. Um, that brand is plant-based, so it's organic, it's derived from raw food. It's not a bunch of isolated vitamins made in a factory, right? Made in a lab. So food source vitamins are best. You wanna add that extra vitamin C. For me, I do 2000 milligrams. You can look up a pro appropriate therapeutic dose for yourself and your kiddos. Um, and they have chewable ones for kids as well. I use Young Living um, Vitamin C, Super C, uh, for myself and my kids also, uh, because we just love that brand. It's very pure. They have chewable ones. My kids love them, um, and they're all about their vitamins. So that's always great as well. Now, another secret hack to your immune system um, that you can use during this season is essential oils. I am all about the oils. I'm an oily mama. I recommend oils to everybody. Oils are a way to get the most power packed part of a plant um, into your body to actually change the way your cells function. So I absolutely love adding oil. I, we use oils every day in my house, but we do double time on the oils when we need that extra adaptability. So favorite immune oils are gonna be Thieves. It's in the Young Living Starter Kit. We put it on the bottom of our kids' feet put it on their spine. I'd love to use lemon as well. It's great for the immune system. It's very detoxifying. Um, and if somebody does have a challenge, we add in some heavy hitters, oregano, frankincense. We love those. So if you need help with oils, just comment below. I can definitely point you in the right direction. But essential oils are a great way to boost your body's immune system. Because guys, really kicking the sick is all about adaptability. But here's the thing. You cannot eat or oil your way to a healthy nervous system and a healthy, as I called it a minute ago, command center of your immune system. So just know that you can do all these things and you should do them. So I'm not saying don't do them, but if you feel like there's a missing link in your health and wellness or with your kiddos health and wellness, then chiropractic can truly reboot your immune system, get it on track. So we do have those boots on the ground, marching for you, and really cleaning up any challenges that you have in your immune system. So last thing I wanted to cover, cause I said I would, and I don't wanna leave it out, is that um, why some people get sick and some people don't. It's really been part of this conversation the whole time, but it's that decreased adaptability. So I can be exposed to the flu, which I was, and I didn't get sick because I was on my adaptability game. I was doing all the things, to stay healthy and it worked in my favor. And so I get exposed to the flu daily with patients that come in. Um, I get kiddos that are coughing and boogering and all that stuff on me and I'm a mom so I don't mind it at all. Um, but also there's lots of germs in that. Now we are not just victims of our environment, okay? We're not sponges soaking up every single thing. We have our skin, we have our mucosa, we have our immune cells in our mouth, in our nose, everything that should be keeping that stuff at bay. So again, if it's not, it goes all the way back to that conversation we've been having of adaptability. The difference between me and somebody right here, Mr. Skeleton, um, and if we're gonna get sick or not, is how much on our A game is our immune system, is our nervous system, and are we increasing adaptability or decreasing it? So. Um, if we can help you guys in any way with health and wellness in this season or in the next, or if you have a friend or family member that's struggling, tag them in this, share this with them because it's just gonna give them some tidbits and meat and potatoes of information on how they can reboot their command center and how they can really take charge of their immune system. So love you guys, thanks for joining me. Sorry we were late. We were busy serving everybody and I'll see you next time, bye.